From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, a member of the I Hear Everything Podcast Network. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. Here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm Benjamin Shapiro, the executive producer of the MarTech Podcast, and today we've got a special episode for you, which is going to be guest hosted by Doug Bell, who's the CMO of Chief Outsiders. Doug is a veteran CMO with a background in helping growth stage B2B SaaS companies reach their true potential, and I'm thrilled to invite him and some of his friends to take the microphone and share their knowledge with you, our loyal MarTech Podcast listeners. Okay, here's a special episode of the MarTech Podcast, guest hosted by Doug Bell, the CMO of Chief Outsiders. Hello, marketers. My name is Doug Bell from Chief Outsiders, and today we're going to be discussing the future of ABM and account-based everything. Joining me today is Dmitry Lisitsky, who is the CEO and co-founder of Influ2. Influ2 helps B2B businesses turn ads into their ultimate sales multiplier by running person-based ads in sync with sales gaining transparency between sales and marketing, and tracking revenue impact from the first touch to a closed deal. Yesterday, Dimitri and I talked about the future of MarTech and ABM, and today we're going to continue our conversation by talking about the concept of account-based everything. Okay, here's my conversation with Dimitri Lisitsky, the CEO and co-founder of Influ2. Dimitri, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Well, it's good to have you back. Good conversation yesterday. And I think a lot of what we talked about yesterday, Dimitri, really was recommendations around best practices, which I think, end of the day, I think really is a nice way of talking about something we didn't discuss yesterday, which is this idea and this misconception quite often that account-based marketing is entirely a marketing motion. So this idea of account-based everything really says, and I'm going to be a little more expansive maybe, and I would be curious whether you agree, it's not just about sales and marketing, but depending on the motion, it can also be a partnership between sellers, marketers, and the customer support organization. In other words, if this motion is meant to create a customer who then is going to buy more stuff, it could be multiple organizations being involved. Is that your sense of this as well? Yes, of course. I think some functions we forget about when we talk about ABM is it is designed for sales-driven organizations. And if you sell to large enterprises and you sell like seven, eight figure contracts, then it's just impossible to sell this kind of contract online through online registration. And you don't expect senior executives to just you know sign up for your service and pay seven figure number through their credit card. So ultimately, salespeople are those who close deals and win clients. And without talking to them, without building something meaningful for them, it's just impossible to make ABM work. And that's exactly when this idea of account-based everything came from. And by the way, I think there is like a better term for this that a lot more Forrester talks about life cycle revenue marketing. And if you dig deeper, it's pretty much about the same concept. But there are two words that they allow about this definition, this life cycle, which means, as you mentioned, it's not just about sales or sales development. It's also about customer success. It's a lot of opportunities beyond just helping to drive pipeline. And the second element of this is revenue. Again, like if you want to align with salespeople, salespeople care about revenue. There's no other way to align with salespeople if you don't have the same metrics, don't have the same target, the same goal. So revenue is, it should become the key in any successful ABM or ABX program to make those two teams align. And it's interesting, you talked a bit yesterday as well about the difficulty of measuring impact and potentially Influ2 has thought about, gee, should we be addressing this? Let's call that attribution for lack of a better term. But we're also really talking about partnership across the organization. But let's get specific if we can. What I'll start with is, in the case of ABM, marketing is being invited in to a seller's account base, right, to their target list. So that feels like the first opportunity for partnership and alignment. The way that a marketing organization might look at that is to say, what is my ICP and what are my segments? But the way that the sellers might look at that is, how do I make my number? 
And so that feels like that first opportunity for partnership between sellers and marketers back to this idea of ABX. And then if we continue that idea, the partnership ultimately needs to be about, do we agree about how we want to go to market with this account list, right? And this goes back to yesterday's conversation, get the design right. And then what you're really talking about in many ways is this movement towards different terms, flywheel, the bow tie, this idea that there's a singular life cycle into which every go-to-market organization must organize themselves. And then really at the end of the day, then if we're creating a healthy account-based motion in the context of flywheel, it doesn't end when revenue is produced. You're talking about that's the beginning of this larger relationship. So my question back to you then is, where do you see some of the opportunities for sales and marketing, and then some of the opportunities for marketing and customer support to gain alignment towards this idea of ABX? You're absolutely right that many people started with an idea of let's have the same shared account list that we want to go after, and that's how you ensure alignment. And when we designed it for two, our idea was this is probably not good enough. You want to align on the buyers, specific individuals are going after, not just accounts. And that was clearly an improvement. What we learned, though, in our journey is that it's not still not enough. And what is lacking is like many marketers still think of them owning just top of the funnel, generating some initial interest, initial awareness, initial engagements, and then hand it off to salespeople. And this idea of handoff is terrible. Because handoff means you don't care about this anymore. And I think this idea comes from the concept of MKLs. And I think when MKL as a term was coined, that was huge relief for marketers because finally they had a very clear metric. How can you measure success of a marketing program? Because if you think of pre-digital times, really the job of a marketer would be just, okay, if you could just print out the presentation, print out materials, business cards, that's pretty much it, right? You can book a stand for, for your for your salespeople. But It was a very secondary job. While with the evolution of digital advertising, digital channels, you finally started providing some very very measurable impact on your organization's pipeline by providing MQLs to your salespeople. And again, like from inbound marketing standpoint, this is great. For outbound, it's not the metric you're looking for, but that created this idea of handoff, right? So because in case of once you produce an MQL, it's, you know, salespeople's job to call the deal, right? And this is a very bad idea because this is where the journey on the starts, right? If someone raises a hand, first, not all of them raise hand in the logic of outbound sales and outbound marketing is you continue knocking the door even to those people who don't have not raised their hand yet. But also, if there are hand raisers, the journey just starts there. And you want to continue supporting sales process after the handoff, what you call after the MKL stage throughout the full life cycle. And this is very hard because marketing needs to change how they think about their metrics, their goals, because it's very easy to measure how many MKLs they got in the last quarter. It's much harder to tell how much revenue you got because of your marketing program in the last quarter. And that's what stops many, even these days, stops many marketers from successfully executing their programs because it's so easy to continue driving MKLs and so hard to sit together with your salespeople and discuss, okay, what do we do during different stages of sales process? What do we do to help you close deals? What do we do to help you to renew your customers? Because there's no MKLs anymore and you need to work together to orchestrate this program to provide meaningful signals to salespeople and also to hear their feedback and improve your program to make it successful. It is much harder, much more heavy lifting, but also it's much more important for the organization because this is how you actually drive extra revenue. I think you make a really good point, which is you talked about the evolution of marketing from digital, to non-digital, and this rubric, if you will, of having lead stages and making it easier for marketers to measure impact. But as sellers would tell you and have been dealing with for centuries, if you will, is simply because somebody shows interest doesn't mean there's velocity. And this idea of account-based motions needing to sort of remove themselves from the common current metrics is completely right, because quite often what's happening is If you can just create that initial engagement and provide indicators of where else the sellers can engage, and you're continuously working to increase engagement in an account, that's actually a better indicator than any MQL could ever be. Because in an inbound motion, getting somebody to actually fill out a form, which would equal an MQL, was the indicator of success. Now what we're saying is have a marketing and sales partner to raise the overall profile of the brand within an account. Because guess what? We have incredibly skilled sellers who pay them a lot of money And they'll be capable of sort of taking it further. But guess what? Marketing's role doesn't end there. We need to continue to increase engagement. And guess what? That's not measured by an MQL. 
Are there other opportunities that you see when it comes to, say, partnering with the other side of things, which is now here we have the burden on sellers and this idea of APX. I'm beginning to close in on closing a deal. I'm beginning to actually talk about implementing an account. Hello, CS. How do we partner on this journey together so that we are actually seeing a highly engaged account that has, from a unit economic standpoint, a longer LTV or a much better CAC to LTV ratio? Sorry, bringing some wonky stuff into the conversation. But this idea that that partnership really is about NRR and good unit economics over time, what are some things that we can look for as marketers and sellers to partner there? Well, I guess the first step is really about providing meaningful insights to salespeople. And again, I think we have seen a lot of cases when marketers try to push salespeople to do what they think they need to do. And I think salespeople already have enough incentives to do to close more deals and to deliver their quotas. So marketers don't need to replay their CROs to tell salespeople what to do. But on the other hand, marketers own a lot of very important signals that salespeople need if they understand the signal. So every engagement, every email open, every click on advertising is a signal someone cares about the content. And there are basically two, two key questions for salespeople, who to call and what to say, right? So basically... The question that every salespeople ask when they wake up in the morning, okay, what should I do today to blow the deals or to basically to get my quota? And this is exactly how do you prioritize your effort. And every signal that marketing has in their database can help answer this question, right? Because engagement is interesting. Engagement is something people, something that distinguish people who care about what you will be talking about them today. And then if you do it tomorrow, it's probably too late, right? Because like people have a short memory. So marketing own a lot of very important data that assuming they, they explain to salespeople what it is and how to use it, they can really help salespeople to drive more success. So I think this is the best starting point when it comes to marketing sales alignment. So what I'm hearing by extension then is it's the same handoff and partnership. You're talking about important data and really engagement data that can help us understand how an account is performing afterwards, really that next level of data. And this gets back to this idea of a flywheel or whatever you want to call it, whatever the flavor of the day is. So Makes a ton of sense to me. I really appreciate your time as a founder and CEO. I know your schedule is busy, so thanks for spending some time with us today. Thank you, Ken. Okay, that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks to Dimitri Lisitsky, CEO and co-founder of Influ2 for joining us. If you'd like to get in touch with Dimitri, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes, or you can contact him on Twitter where his handle is at L-I-S-I-T-S-K-I or visit his company's website at Influ2.com. Okay, that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks to our guest host, Doug Bell, the CMO of Chief Outsiders. If you'd like to get in touch with Doug, you could find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes, or you can contact him on Twitter, where his handle is Market Advocate. Or you could just visit his website, which is chiefoutsiders.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even apply to be the next guest speaker on the MarTech Podcast. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly on LinkedIn. My handle is Ben J. Shap, E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy.